of this very planet, we welcome you to another global address from this holy land of Israel on this very day, the December the 8th, in the year of our Most High Elohim 2018. The time now is approximately 2 minutes past 7 p.m. here. It is the same number of minutes past the top of the hour, wherever you are domiciled around the world. As I welcome you, I will also ask you to welcome those around you. Tell your friends and tell your family. Even if those friends are Wusafulani, even if those friends are Yoruba or from any other ethnicity in the damnable zoological republic, you must invite them to listen to the various gospel. The gospel of truth and redemption. Here we must preach it. Because we are under divine instruction from heaven to propagate the gospel of the restoration of Biafra. There is nothing anybody can do about it. This very project must be executed to perfection. I welcome you. My name is Enam Dekanu. I am the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra. I will serve my people unto death because that is what we have been instructed to do and that is what we must do. You must join us this evening. If you do not know how to listen to or how to receive Radio Biafra, there are very simple ways by which you should be able to do that. Very, very simple. If you all clog up within one platform, that platform will crash because Radio Biafra is a global phenomenon. A global phenomenon. I'm sure right now out on of the streets of Biafra land, our people are nowhere to be found because everybody is congregating around their listening device to partake in this very blessing. Because that's what it is. To listen to Radio Biafra is a privilege. It is a blessing. And tonight, Chukwuki Kabiyama will do as he has always promised us that he will do. You can listen to us via radiobiafra.co. You can go online to listen. Those in Biafra land can listen on their FM dial CHK 102.1. Across great swathes of Biafra land, you can listen to Radio Biafra on your radio. You can also do so online, as I said earlier, via radiobiafra.co. You can listen via ipob.org. You can listen via Radio Biafra app if you don't have it. You can also listen via tuning app. You can listen via satellite. I've told some of you to endeavor to install satellite around your towns and your villages that those who are less privileged may be able to partake in this very weekly offering. And tonight we welcome the family at Mbise, the Mbise IPOB, because they're listening to Radio Biafra via CHK. 102.1. If you are in and around Mbise, if you dial 102.1 on your FM, you will be able to receive Radio Biafra. Before we proceed any further, we must pray. We have to pray because Chukwokeka Biamu must accept our prayers, our supplication, our adoration, our exaltation, and our praise of His holy name. That is why we have gotten to where we are today, and that is how we will continue until Biafra is restored fully and completely. There are those that doubt our resolve. There are those that doubt our ability to sustain this very fight, and I'm sure by now they have all been shamed. This colossal task of unmasking Jubril must continue. Some people are in a haste as if they are traitors. Always wanting to count profit and loss. But we are taking you through a gradual process of education, of reorientation and enlightenment. That your brains may be open at the end of this very exercise. Believe you me, you will no longer reason like a black baboon. Instead, you will be reasoning like a Biafran. I can assure you of that. We must pray. We must call upon the name of the Most High Chukwoki Kabiyama must bless this very mission we embarked upon, and this evening, this is how we do it. 
how we always do it, and how we shall continue to do it. Blessed be the name of Elohim. In whom there is every trust and every faith, every hope that this very journey, this very epic journey towards the promised land of Biafra, which is drawing very close, which we have all looked up to all our lives from the day we were born, that you will, out of the abundance of your mercy, take us to this very land as you have promised. We have nothing. We have no guns and we have no bullets. We have no strength. Neither do we possess any might. All our trust is upon thee. That you may be able to deliver us as you promised us. That you may be able to fight our battles for us. That our enemies may flee when they see us. That your grace may multiply upon our lives. This evening I dedicate from this very lofty platform, this radio Biafra received all over the world across the 24 time zones that you have made. That your blessing must be upon IPOB. Each and every IPOB family member upon the face of the earth must receive the abundance of your blessing. Because we have suffered tremendously. Our land has been ravaged by people we do not know. Those working with our enemies are now our leaders and we are suffering as a result of it. People who do not know the ungodly men and women are presiding over the affairs of your children. This is an abomination before your sight. We beseech thee, almighty one, to set us free from their bondage. For you, Elohim, to bring Biafra closer, that your will may be done upon the face of this earth. And your name glorified, exalted, magnified, and praised now and forevermore, we pray. He said, He said, He said, This is Radio Biafra. We must proceed. As I said earlier, allow me to remind you. You can listen to us via Radio Biafra.co, not .com, .co, Radio Biafra.co. I suggest you make it a habit. Every blessed day when you get up in the morning, wherever you are, endeavor to go to RadioBiafra.co. That is where you will get all the truthful news concerning every effort we are making to restore Biafra. You can also listen to us via IPOB.org. Everything is www.IPOB.org. The same applies to Radio Biafra. www radiobiafra.co you can also listen via radio biafra app if you have not downloaded it, try and download it and join us there tuning app is also there you can download tuning that platform is unjammable they cannot get into it you can listen to us via facebook on radio biafra the one with 670 something thousand people please because there are fake radio biafras all over the place make sure it is the one that has been liked almost 700,000 times. It is very, very important that you do that. I don't know if you are streaming also on Radio Biafra London. Anybody, are we streaming on there? Every platform where we command, every platform we control, the link of this very broadcast must be embedded there. That people may participate and we are not found in only one place where um, those of them working for Facebook in Lagos will be able to switch us off or turn us off at their own will. We are also on satellite, as I said earlier. If you have not installed satellite for your parents and your grandparents in the village, then there is something wrong with you. You must try and do that as quickly as possible. We must proceed this evening. The scientific masking of Jubril must continue because they are reeling. 
The liars are everywhere. They are trying to confuse you as always. And I knew that was all they're going to do. I've always known. At some point, they will try to confuse you. That's what they do. You're talking about cassava. They're talking about yam. You talk about cocoa yam, they talk about potato. Every time trying to do all they can to distract you, to steer you away from the issues that matter, to try to ridicule what we are saying. When they themselves know it is the truth. As I told you here, all of a sudden, the man in Asorok, having fun at our expense, Jubril from Sudan, has it not become very clear now that he cannot speak Fufude, the Fulani language? Has it not been confirmed now? The first day I made my broadcast from this holy land of Israel, I told you that that thing there cannot speak the Fulani ethnic language. I told all of you. Instead of Yoruba journalists, instead of all these one Nigerian apologies, all these unity beggars, instead of them to go back and investigate and say to themselves, is this thing in Nam the Kanu is saying, is it true? Or they say, oh, it's ridiculous. There is nobody who can be Buhari. It's only Buhari. But I just gave you a very simple assignment. Find out if the man can speak full food, which is full and indigenous language. Which, incidentally, Buhari spoke very fluently when he was alive. Nobody could do that. Instead, they, they chose to attack me. Anytime I complain about black people and how stupid we are, people shouldn't get offended because they must know I'm speaking the truth. You are telling somebody something. In all our education, in everything we know about life, be it in the law courts, be it in the laboratory, everywhere, everything is based on verifiable proof. Something you can verify. If I say you're a criminal, I will tell people what you stole and the time you stole it. Rather than saying, oh no, he didn't steal it. All you need to do is to go and find out if something was stolen in the first place, the place and the time the crime actually happened. That would save us a lot of time, isn't it? And I can't. I said to you that the new version of Buhari you have now, the body double Buhari you have now, the imposter you have now, cannot speak full any language. It's a very simple thing. And uh, finally, out of all of you, as cowardly and as imbecilic as some of you are, you didn't bother checking. But from tonight, I have new found respect for, for the most honorable minister, the Minister of Information, Al Haji Lai Mohammed, most honorable for being able to tell us that indeed what Unam the Khan is saying is correct. This man we have there cannot speak full food. Later on, we'll tell you how come somebody you voted for who spoke Fufude to you when he was running for office can no longer speak the same language and somehow, miraculously, you still believe he is the same person. We are going to shred Jubril. It is piece by piece. I have said it before, at the end of this process, the zoo must fall. Very simple. Allow us to take our time to do it. I have said this before. That was why we fought a war for only three years. We gave up. Southern Sudan fought for 30 years and they succeeded. Today they are free. Forget all the nonsense telling about civil war. Civil wars happen, of course. Again, we are in a hurry. And our people are in the north. You must remember that. We are in the northern part of the zoo. You must remember that. We need to manage the outward flow of information, the dissemination of information must be well timed as to not to place our people in the north in danger. Before Umudo will go and tell them, oh, I told you so, he will cause trouble for you. You know those are our slaves, the way they talk. You must believe in us, you must trust us. I know some of you want Jubril to come down today, today, today. Of course he's coming down. If I had done the expose, all of it, on the first day of my broadcast, there is no way the whole world will be laughing at Jubril right now, and the whole of you, Nigerians. No. It's very gradual. It's death by a thousand cuts. And they will bleed to death, I assure you. 
This is Radio Biafra Time now. It's exactly 16 minutes past the hour of 7 here in the evening in Israel, the Holy Land of Israel. I went to the temple yesterday to pray. I'm sure some of you saw it, although it didn't quite get the level of exposure that you normally get because um, the person videoing us um, wasn't that good after all because Ike Tuku wasn't there. And I'm sure later he will tell me why he wasn't able to do so. We must commence our broadcast this very evening by looking at lie, Mohammed's lie about cloning. Because the zoo is very clever. They think they're intelligent. They've been spending billions upon billions trying to suppress this very issue of Jubril. But they have not succeeded. And they will never succeed. I never said that Jubril is a clone. I said he's a body double, a look-alike, an impersonator. In the past few days, the Nigerian presidency has worked very, very hard to put a spin on the very credible revelations I made. Because anything I say comes to pass. On this, once I sit behind this microphone, I am under heavenly mandate. Anything I speak, anything I talk about, anything I say comes to pass. I say every, everything I say comes to pass. It was only yesterday that somebody woke me up with a voice note. I checked it and it was an announcement I made on the 8th of June, 2015. The people were sharing and listening to it. Because what I said about ISIS came to pass. Everything I told you about Buhari have come. Everything I tell you about anybody comes to pass eventually. When I told you Niawodo was a two-bit criminal, did it not happen? When I told you those you call your political leaders are out to kill you, to pillage, to loot, and to steal. Some of you didn't believe me. What is happening in the zoo today? Everything I tell you comes to pass. And everything I will tell you tonight on this platform must surely come to pass. Those revelations were credible and I made them last year in my compound before they came to kill me. If you don't know the reason why they killed 28 of my men, if you don't know the reason why they want Namdekano dead, this is the reason. My revelation about the identity of Jubril. I knew the day Buhari died. There's a Yoruba girl uh, that was writing a column somewhere, or she wrote a column somewhere and said that um, it is laughable, my allegation that Buhari had died. But one thing this lady didn't bother doing is actually doing a proper investigation. We know there is international conspiracy of silence when it comes to Biafra. We know that very well. We know that CNN cannot carry any news pertaining to Biafra because they've been heavily bribed. We also know that some of the foreign correspondents and journalists in the zoo can never report the atrocities, the massacres, the kidnappings and the killings going on in that damnable zoological republic. They'll never report it, never because they are heavily paid, bribed. They take bribe not to report the truth. That was why a whole reputable AFP, the Ocean's French Press, the same way you have Reuters and AP, can do take, claim they did a fact check that Buhari is not Jubril. But I believe at the end of this process, their faces will be covered with shame. There are foreign journalists in Nigeria their faces, some of them, some are truthful, their faces will be covered with death. All of them. We must continue. They have been spinning this story. I told you that Jubril underwent extensive plastic surgery, but they've been spinning it. Spin means to turn away the true narrative into something completely different. Because they know when they say it is cloning, nobody will believe that a 75-year-old man could be cloned. It's as simple as that. For you to clone somebody, you need to clone them from the day they were born to get a replica of that very person. So we know that Jubril is not the clone of Buhari. Jubril is a body double, a look-alike, an imposter. Because they know that 
Nigerians are stupid by nature. They know that black Africans cannot reason very well. They can bring anything. They can bring a sheep, a dog, a goat. There are some people in the zoo, when you tell them that your dog is Buhari, they will believe you. They will say, of course it's true. That is why, after going through this whole Jubril saga, I forgave Michael Jackson. If I had money, I would have given him to do even more plastic surgery, I'm telling you. The way some of us reason is unbelievable. Unbelievable. Somebody is taller today, they are shorter. It doesn't concern you. You don't think there's anything wrong with it. And you're telling me... Oh, not come around and dear, but... Buhari does not have a clone. Never. What he has is a body double, an impostor from Sudan. Even Jibril himself, during his current trip to when he went to Poland, he claimed he is the real Buhari. It is real me. Is that how you respond to somebody? If they, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm that. Oh, Akwonya uh, and comfort. And oh, are you comfort, comfort's son, or maybe? Uh, Dad, Hamma, or whatever it is. You say, I think I am him. I think I am my mother's child. I, you think? You're not sure? It is real me, I assure you, he said during his trip. There are people online, newspaper houses, editors in the zoo, foreign correspondents, having been stuffed with dollars. Spilling this very line on social media, this clone dimension, in order to mislead everybody, to mislead the Americans, to mislead the Europeans, to mislead those in Asia. That what is happening is just a mere rumor and just a joke. When that is not the case, and will never ever be. According to standard medical and scientific definitions, a clone is an object. That is the exact duplicate or replica of another object with the same characteristics and properties. Biological, so to speak. Both for the you, but I don't like it. That is why I don't want to digress too much. So that our grandmothers listening in Mbise can understand what I'm saying. We must continue the way we do things here. If you apply cloning to human beings, a clone is a human being that has been produced artificially, for example, in a laboratory from the cells of another human being, which turns to be the exact same original person. Buhari was not cloned. Buhari died. They went to Sudan, brought Jubril Amino al Sudani to come and take over after extensive plastic surgery costing nearly $250 million, I spelled all these things out on day one. I said it. As outlandish as it may have sounded to black African people. Almost um, every head of state in the 70s had a body double. The only thing is that they never had the guts or the temerity to deceive their people to the extent of getting that very clone to sign treaties to have that clone preside over state affairs. A clone is meant, so not a clone, an impostor, a body double, is meant to appear during functions and ceremonies. They appear and they disappear. They don't handle the affairs of state. Where Abakiari and his fellow cabals, including Sultan of Sokoto, where they went wrong is that they went as far as allowing the Sudanese, a foreign national, to preside over the affairs of the zoo called Nigeria. That's their problem. And that is a crime. By every definition, the worst crime you can ever imagine. Deceiving an entire country if Nigeria could be described or characterized as a country. We are asked a body double or lookalike or an impersonator in this case is a political decoy. It's a decoy. Let's say I want to travel from here to Haifa. I can decide to send my double, my body double first. So if that's going to be an assassination, isn't it? They can kill it. That's what it's used for. Where there is heightened security concerns. 
not for that do body double to represent you. It's not possible. It's not done that way. But <laughs> Fulani being who they are, they want power at all cost. They decided to go ahead and uh, make their own body double the president and refuse to announce the death of Buhari. A, a body double is somebody who has been selected for their physical resemblance to the original person they are looking to mimic or to impersonate. That's all. Not a clone. I repeat, not a clone. Somebody that looks like somebody. Maybe the same, approximately the same height or the same build, the same gait and all the rest of it. And then they did a bit of um, finishing touches to the face and wheeled him out to become Buhari. Never a clone. And the resemblance in this case between Jubril and Buhari was strengthened by plastic surgery. We must make that very clear. Such decoys are trained to speak and to behave like the person being impersonated. Research everything that I'm telling you. We are coming to the substance of tonight's program. But we must lay this foundation and kill this clone nonsense. Jubril was not cloned. That is not the central argument we are making. What we are saying is that Jubril is from Sudan. Brought him to replace the dead Buhari after undergoing extensive plastic surgery. That was what I said. Not a clone. There were many other... Clones are everywhere in terms of animals. You know, you know you've heard about Dolly the sheep and all the rest of it. Never in humans. Never. You can clone, you can grow certain human tissue in, for instance, in mice or in, in, in pigs and all the rest of it. I think they're experimenting how to grow human heart in a pig or um, to make the human heart accept the heart of a pig or something like that. But never humans. You can clone animals, you know, but never human beings. So I started to wonder when I heard about this cloning nonsense why they introduced it they introduced it to try to ridicule what we are saying because they know that the issue of an imposter a body double is more plausible people can identify with that very easily but not the one of cloning so that is why they are pushing it and i'm asking you tonight to resist it don't talk about cloning it is not about cloning it's about impersonating somebody a fake a look-alike a body double that they brought in to replace the dead buhari Buhari was about 75 years old when he assumed the presidency. And he looked very much his age. Everybody knew that Buhari was fairly, of course, he's in his mid-80s, but they claim he's mid-70s. We accept it. If you look at him before he died, you will know that he looked his age. All of a sudden, he has been transformed into this very young, healthy, vibrant young man. And people are saying it is uh, God's miracle that God has healed him. Do you see the dangers of attending too many Pentecostal churches? <laughs> you begin to, I don't know, I can't even begin to qualify your reasoning capacity because it baffles me. Because you believe in the miracle of healing. That means that a, a God can make it possible for an 80-year-old man to look as young as 45. I, I can't understand this. And if God is going to perform any, any miracle, is it going to be on Buhari? Eh? So if God wants to perform miracle now, so there is no, you choose Buhari, is that what you're telling me? That is impossible. Absolutely impossible. Buhari had a receding hairline. And the rest of what was left of his hair was very brittle. And towards the tail end of his life, the hair became very scanty and snow white. All this can be verified from his photographs taken during the electionary campaigns. They are all there in 2015. At the time that he was sworn in and during his long illness, you knew that Buhari was essentially bald, no hair. This contrasts very sharply with this Mr. Jubril from Sudan, who appears to have fuller, very, main hair, very thick, much darker hairlines, and now permanently sports a cap, which he, he, re, he even refused to remove it. He went to the Holocaust Memorial in Poland, and he refused to remove his cap. Have you heard of any, 
anybody paying homage before the memorial in Poland, the Jewish Holocaust memorial in Poland, without moving his cap. Every other person did, apart from himself. That's why he would not wear the suit. During election campaigns, people are required to at least provide a more corporate, a far more formal appearance by wearing a suit. The dead Buhari did the same thing in 2015. But this is 2018. Less than two months to the election, or barely two months to the election, he has refused to take off his hat and to take a picture in his suit. But of course, it's been confirmed today he cannot speak the Fulani native tongue, which is Fufude. Now that Jubril does not speak Fufude, but speaks only Hausa, so they claim. Has anyone heard him speak Hausa before? I've not heard him speak Hausa. Let them not confuse you that he speaks Hausa. He must come out to speak ordinary Hausa. What he speaks is a very watered down, very laughable Buhari accent, which we shall attempt to prove later. One wonders then why Jubril, claiming to be, to be the real Buhari, cannot speak Buhari's native language. Since last year, since February of last year, I did not say this year, since February of 2017, Anybody, any observer will notice the profound distance in public, even till today, between Jubril and Buhari's family. I said distance between Jubril and Buhari's family. Very noticeable distance. Especially Aisha and the son Yusuf. When Yusuf was photographed shaking the hands of Jubril when he returned from his trip abroad, any discerning human being could see that this man is not this boy's father. But as usual in Nigeria, the, the journalists, they don't investigate. Uh, they said, oh, it's nothing. It's a, it's a simple courtesy. He was greeting a president. Buhari was a tall person noticeably taller than he is today. There is no explanation as to why Buhari was tall in 2016 and in 2017, 2018, he is now a shorter person. We've been asking this question over and over again. Nobody cares to answer. Why is Buhari now shorter than the former Buhari? Because it is Jubril that is in charge. Buhari is dead. They said Buhari used to wear high heels before. Uh, according to doctor's orders, he no longer wears high heels. I don't know if anyone has seen Buhari before in a high heel. I've never seen him before in one. I don't know who has seen him in one before. So there you have it. Jubril from Sudan is not a biological clone of Buhari, but a completely different fellow. Impersonating the real but late Buhari. On the dummy that is a look that is look alike, of course, who underwent some cosmetic fixes that appear to have convinced many of gullible Nigerians. That is Buhari. The truth is that Jubril can never be Buhari. No, his clone is merely a body double and an imposter. And later on we shall go into details as to who brought him in and for what purpose my happiness is this i challenge all of you tonight to go and look at every tweet from a white person all over the world americans and europeans go and check their tweet messages go and check their response to this cloning nonsense to this impersonator jubril and you will see the clear difference between white people and black people as to how they reason. That tells you all you need to know. Some of you know um, Max Weiss. She's a lady, she was um, reporting on the Hill's coverage of Buhari's um, trip to Poland and what he said. This very brilliant white lady said, I believe the headline was supposed to have read, Ghost of Nigerian President Denies Claim He Died and Was Replaced by an Imposter. She's very intelligent. 
She didn't go with your cloning nonsense. She knew what she was talking about. Every white person, everybody in the world, apart from black African people, from Sudan to South Africa, every other person, every other nation, every other country on the face of this very earth, now is convinced that Buhari is dead. Only Nigerians. Only. And you wonder why you don't have electricity and running water. Is in your, your problem is your brain because you cannot reason very carefully. Let us, let us look at this lie from Lai Muhammad very carefully. And understand what is going on. And understand what is going on. They said uh, Buhari can no longer speak his natural mother tongue. Why? Because they said he underwent brain surgery. He underwent surgery in the brain. And maybe during the surgery, one of the surgeons accidentally caught the wire leading, connecting for food and language to his, to, his, um, to his brain. I don't know. But left one for house and for English. Do you see how it works in the zoo? Do you now agree with me what I told you before? when I started this broadcast, that Buhari underwent brain surgery. Did I not say that? And I told her he never recovered. He had multiple organ failure and died. Now it's been confirmed. They've been hold You know, sometimes the thing about me, maybe that was what my father taught me, is to be able to make out what somebody is saying by what they're not telling you. When you speak to me, when you talk to me, I can discern, I can about make out what you're hiding or what you're keeping from me. They never wanted to tell anybody, any Nigerian, what ailment afflicted Buhari or what type of treatment he received. But courtesy of Radio Biafra and this expose that we are doing, now you know that Buhari at least had some measure of surgery done to his head. So you should thank Radio Biafra for that. Every Nigerian must thank Radio Biafra at least because of us. You now know that when Buhari traveled to London, he had a surgical procedure done to his head. When this story broke yesterday that uh, Lai Muhammad, the most honorable Lai Muhammad said uh, that uh, Buhari, which is Jibril, can no longer speak his mother tongue. Uh, you know, Nigerians, and everything is a comedy. <laughs> if you tell them now that the price of food has gone up. They'll be laughing. They'll be saying, uh, it's a very big joke. Oh. That, that's how they are. Everything is a joke. They are suffering and they are smiling. It's in their nature. Nobody can change it. No human being can. That is the way they are. As dumb as a piece of plank. They are telling us, when I told the world here, when I told you here, on this very platform, that Jubilee cannot speak food food eh? Uh, some Yoruba columnists <laughs> writing for Yoruba, Yoruba newspapers ignored it. Some called me names. You know, I love to be called names. Uh, actually, it inspires me. But yesterday, Lai Muhammad confirmed it to everyone that Buhari is dead, essentially. Because this nonsense about not being able to speak his mother tongue because one of the surgeons cut off the nerve uh, that connects Fufuda to his brain is pure rubbish. Anybody foolish enough to doubt me must be possessed by evil spirit, I tell you. Because it must be a person with some sort of naturally endowed ignorance, not to see the truth in what I'm saying. What Lai Muhammad should boldly tell us is this. Are there any other aspects of Buhari's ability or bodily function that has altered or impaired as a result of the surgery he underwent? We must know. We shall find out later on today if that surgery affected the palm of his hand or not. Maybe they cut off the part of the brain that gives you fingerprint and the dimensions on the palm of your hand. There are some things you cannot hide. There are some things that are not hidden under the sun. 
There are some physical features you have that plastic surgery can never ever save you. The more you try to work on them, the worse it becomes. One of it is the ear, which I told you before, that some people just ignored. Yoruba especially. They ignored it. But if you look at Buhari's left ear, the lobule is damaged. The outer ear is damaged. The outer ear of the new guy is not damaged. But nobody wants to ask any. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. Nigerians. We must continue. We must also ask again, did that surgery completely remove the cancerous growth on the left side of his lower lip? We know that Jubril was subjected to a very extensive plastic surgery. But is it when you now undergo plastic surgery and they cut open your brain, do you suddenly become looking younger as a result of it? I don't know. Maybe this is some kind of hallelujah surgery. They must show me this, this surgeon that did this very work. So the whole world can be going there. So why bother looking for, for youth when you can go to London Bridge Hospital in London and your head will be cut open and you will look practically 40 years younger than your age. 40 years younger than your age. I am very sure that most rich people around the world would like to know how London Bridge Hospital conducted this miraculous procedure on an old man in his 80s, more or less. Because in Nigeria, they lie about their age. All of them, they lie about their age. I don't lie about mine, but they do lie about their own age. That is the way they are. Lying comes to them as second nature. We shall look at Aisha Buhari's outburst in greater detail because anybody who can reason Aisha's speech on Wednesday is confirmation that Buhari is dead. When we go through it, we shall obviously make that uh, I'm known to the whole world tonight. The funniest thing is that no Nigerian prophet, no Nigerian preacher, no Nigerian man of God or predictor ever foresaw this greatest political fraud of two centuries. This is the worst crime in the whole world. A crime against democracy is a crime against God in heaven. What Abak Yari and Fulani Cabals have done with the active connivance of the Sultan of Sokoto is to bring eternal shame and disgrace upon Nigeria. You cannot wish it away because it's not going away. I'm here. And the world must hear about it. It is a historic deception and lies of unimaginable magnitude. By the time this shameful episode in the history of the zoo is over, all the races on earth will know that we blacks are not only evil liars, we are deceivers. They will know that we have no respect for ourselves because if you had any shred of respect for one another, there is no way you could have gone to subvert the constitution, subvert democracy, subvert the people to import somebody from Sudan to come, not only to be enjoying Nigeria, but to be enjoying Aisha as well, without marriage. It's an abomination before God and before man. I tell you, every day I discover why blacks are at the bottom of the pile in the whole world. The race at the, at the lowest of the low because you are evil and because you are wicked. Your wickedness has no bounds. Wickedness, all around, and wickedness of a black person is unimaginable. How can you conceive such nonsense? Instead of them to express their outrage and anger, some people are trying to excuse them because of their selfish interest to preserve Nigeria's unity. They lie and they deceive themselves. But we must continue to expose them. At least to his credit, Toyedeko said something, albeit belatedly. And maybe people should be coming to Radio Biafra, they should be paying me tight and the contribution, isn't it? Because everything I say comes to pass. Nothing your pastors ever say happens, does it? Was it not Suleiman that said, I will inherit, I will encounter double disgrace, both locally and internationally? Isn't it very funny? Who has been disgraced today? Locally and internationally. Who? Because the devil spoke to him. 
not Elohim. The devil. He said, the will be disgraced. Instead of him to say that Nam the Kano will bring into the fall news that, that will disgrace somebody, both local and international, he said it's me because he's a, he's a northerner. He wants to preserve one Nigeria. Because by preserving one Nigeria, that is the only way the presence of Biafrans will stop Fulani people from killing all of them and taking over their land. That's all. They want one Nigeria because of oil. Oyedekwa has woken up, and I give him credit for that, to be honest with you. I, I comment. He spoke very passionately. That was how I expected every preacher of the world to react. How Oyedekwa reacted. I expected all of them to react the same way. Righteous indignation because this is an abomination before man and before heaven. But some of you are busy laughing. <sighs> In my next life, I won't come close to Africa, I assure you. I'm telling you. It's unbelievable. Unbelievable. I ask those of you uh, that attend all these mega churches. Those that claim they are pastors or they are daddy geo seeing to the future, how come they never saw the coming of this great fraud? This is a crime of immense proportions. This is the worst thing that could have ever happened to any democracy around the world. This is taking the confidence of a people and rubbing it in the dirt and feeding it to them to eat. This is the worst thing anybody... People died for this democracy that you have in the zoo. Or supposed, assumed democracy. People, a lot died. Abacha killed many people because of this. Abiola died because of this. Now, what other option do you have? Is it not to look yourselves in the faces and then decide the degree or scale of stupidity? that you're wrong. This Jibril saga, if anything, has shown that none of your so-called daddy geos is a child of the living Elohim. None of them is. Because if they were, they would have seen this thing coming. But they are not. And they can never be. They are blind in the spiritual realm. Isiburu, they cannot see. They don't and cannot see anything. But I'm sure, come the end of this month, some of them will come with their fake unfulfillable prophecies crap and you all lap it up you will sow seed you will sow what goodness knows whatever you will do all these things and then nothing will come of it this historic and unprecedented unmasking of Jubril will not only change forever the British colonial contraption called Nigeria it will greatly impact the demonic Pentecostal prosperity preaching churches founded on lies and false teachings. This is for another day, maybe. Because right now we must proceed. You have, I'm just trying to build the foundation for what we are doing tonight. And then we come to the scientific analysis later. We have looked at the so called men of God. What I'm trying to do here is to present to you those people in your society that claims they know it all that claims they understand what is happening those of them that claim they are the ones capable of providing viable leadership they have all failed woefully from your churches from your ministers in your churches to some of those that claim that they are elders and speak for the people they have all failed why they have failed you need to find out from them i can't help you let us look at the intellectuals those that say that we are the intellectuals. I've just been reminded of a particular prophet in any room. He is so blind. He is so blind, he doesn't even know that Buhari is dead. He said to Jibril, I will pray for Buhari, I will pray for you. Namdekano and Atiku will not do anything to you, as if I know who Atiku is. I am one of the most vocal critics of Atiku. Everything to do with Fulani hegemony, I hate it. And they know it. What's his name again? Is it the Enugu prophet? I want to make him popular tonight by mentioning his name. Maybe they can, APC can give him money tomorrow after this. Because he needs money. No, it's Prophet Nwoko. 
not Mbaka, Prophet Mwoko. They love going to him because I no longer give him money. That's why he came out with his nonsense. But this Jibril saga has destroyed him completely. A very hungry, a very poor man indeed. Poverty is not the absence of material wealth. It's the absence of the gift, or should I say the spirit, of being contented with what you have. That is the difference. Prophet Mwoko Webo Nyononto saying he's praying for Jibril and calling him Buhari. That is how sad his life has become. But I shall pray for him. I will pray for him. Wole Shoyinka and the rest of the pontificating class that claim they have monopoly of knowledge when in actual fact they know absolutely nothing. Is that an insult? I'm just telling you the fact. Anybody that looks at it, does, it won't take you long. Once you look at Jubril, you will know that this is a fraud. It's a fake. Where are your elders? Those that say they can, what they can see from under the bunker, we cannot see from atop a tree. What are they? Have they said anything about Jubril? No. Even some of them went to visit Jubril today, praying for him. Maybe it's Methodist Church, Anglican Church, I don't know. They say, you know what hunger can, can do to black African people? You know, when it comes to hunger, we, we don't play with our stomach. And that was what Shea Gavara said when he came to Congo to fight in the liberation struggle. After a while, he left. They asked him, why did you leave? He said, because and a black African man cannot ever, ever put the need for his self-preservance and dignity before his stomach. He always puts his stomach first. That's why Shea Gavara went back. He came to Africa to fight. Some of you don't know that. Africans, they, that is why when you give them bread with the label, with your picture on the, on the label of the bread, they vote for you, you go in and you steal all their money. You come back again, you buy them chinchim, you know chinchim, in a, small, in a smaller packet this time, and they still vote for you. Because that thing they're eating at that material point in time is all they require. I don't, I don't, is it God that made us this way? Is it Satan? I don't know who, who, who did this to us. I don't know. And some of us <laughs> traveled abroad to study. And yet, we learn nothing. We learn absolutely nothing. We must continue. How about the uh, all BSA questions of this world and all the people are called the velvet activists? Why are they not outraged at this great fraud against the people by two men? Isn't that what Aisha said? Aisha said it's two men running the government. You understand? It's just like as I am. As my father is the traditional ruler of my people, I will come, or my mother will be lamenting one day, oh, there are two people in my father's cabinet running the cabinet. I'll ask my mother, but where's my father? Isn't it? My father is there to run the affairs of the village. Is that not correct? Of the people, of the community. Then my mother is complaining that there are two, these two men in my father's cabinet that's always calling the shots. I, I will ask my mom, but uh, where is daddy? Isn't it? Isn't that common sense? <laughs> it's not common in the zoo. It's not. The one thing you call common sense is not common to Nigerians. Why are people not outraged that two men are holding all of you hostage? And uh, after we go through what Aisha Buhari said later, I will tell you I have renewed respect for that woman. I'm telling you. The same way I respect Patience Jonathan. I have a lot of respect for Patience Jonathan. A lot. Sometimes I think that Nigeria would have been a better place had a woman been in charge of Nigeria. I'm telling you the truth. Dora Kunili. Um, where is not obvious and not obvious, where's the, where's the other one? The, um, the one with World Bank. Gozo Kunji The light, it would have been better for Nigerians to vote for Aisha Buhari to be president. I'm telling you. Very frank, straightforward, upright, and boldly truthful. Same way as 
Mrs. Patience Jonathan, whom I like very much, I must say. I must say. I like her a lot. She's very bold. I like her a lot. The Sultan of Sokoto claims he's a pious man. And I'm sure many people were tempted to believe him in the past. I saw him, I looked at him many years ago, and I thought maybe he's an upright, humble, honest, Islamic, religious man. But he is now part of the gang that would do anything to have a Fulani man in power. Very, very disgraceful. From Atiku Abubakar to Governor Yahya Bell of Kogi State, be they PDP or APC, all of them are aware that an imposter from Sudan is running the zoo. But they have all kept quiet. Because they are hoping that foolishly all of you Nigerians will stumble towards the elections and you vote Atiku in. And they will sweep all this nonsense under the carpet. <laughs> but it's a lie. It's not going to happen. It won't happen. Because you cannot go to an election with somebody who is an imposter, who is not a Nigerian, not even registered. It can never happen. So those of you dreaming presidential election, you are all dreaming for nothing. It will never happen. Because an imposter without certificate cannot run for an elected office in Nigeria when he is a foreign national. Can never happen. Let us begin by looking at some things that, uh, that God has given to us naturally. This is what I call natural science. You don't need uh, too much um, on your computer to do this. It's very simple and very straightforward. Uh, you look at what is about to come, and then you decide for yourself. Uh, you know, you begin to place yourself on a scale in terms of how reasonable you are or how daft you are. Let us start by dissecting Buhari and Jubril's finger and palm prints. Who said to I want you, those of you in the studio, look at the palm of your hand and tell me if yours and that of a queen is the same. Is it the same? If you're listening to this program tonight, I don't care if you are identical twins. Open your two hands. See if you're about to pray. Open the palm of your hands and look at the big lines that run. And tell me if you share the same configuration with anybody else. The palm of your... You cannot hide this one. You don't need an Einstein to tell you this. If you don't have the same palm print or fingerprint as me, you are not in the can. Do you understand? So they can bring as many people as possible to pretend to be Buhari. But none of them can be Buhari because Buhari's palm print is unique. Unique to Buhari alone. The palm of your hand, look at it. And look at the one of the person next to you, then you will know that you cannot have two Buharis, only one, and that one is dead, buried in Saudi Arabia. Let us continue. Like in earlier presentations, where I have explained to you in very clear details how certain outwardly visible features on a human body is unique and can never ever be duplicated. Never. Even by nature. Never. It can never happen. In this, as long as the earth remains, as long as this earth remains, no other human being can be born with the set of fingerprints you have on your hand. No other person. Even if the earth lives to be 4.5 billion years, as they claim, the sun will, will last before it, it burns itself out. Even if this earth were to survive for the next 4.5 billion years, you will never have another person share the same fingerprint as yourself. That is the mystery of creation. And that's why I love God so much. The mystery of creation. So anybody bringing somebody to represent Buhari must also think that, hey, any day you wave at us, is bye-bye, it's over. That bye-bye you're waving at us is for yourself and for us as well because you're going. 
any day again, as I'm telling you tonight, I'm talking to Yoruba journalists. I'm sure they all have cameras, yes? You all have cameras and smartphones. Any day Jubril comes out again to wave bye-bye, he's waving bye-bye to himself and to, to all of you. Because it will be clear to you that Jubril is not Buhari. What's that going up here? Any more, any more discussion? End of discussion. But we must continue here. We must continue because this is Radio Biafra. I enjoy speaking the truth. I will speak it. There is nothing any mortal can do to me. I will speak the truth on this very platform. Hallowed platform. Radio Biafra, one and only. People may try to mimic us, to copy us. Maybe we may even have um, a body double somewhere pretending that they are Radio Biafra, but they are not. There's only one. We are unclonable. You cannot clone us. Up on Ngozi Chineke, as my name is Ngozi Chibu. Some of you don't know that, do you? Do you know that my name is Ngozi Chibu? Uh, but they, they say people named Ngozi are very stubborn. And I don't think I am. I only speak the truth. Yes, my grandma named me Ngozi Chibu. Ngozi Chineke. We must continue. We looked at the issue of Buhari's left ear and agreed from the video and pictorial evidence available that Buhari had a damaged left ear, Lobo, which Jubril doesn't, despite the fact that the difference between both men are so obvious. The Nigeria media, dominated by a few corrupt unity-begging people, have chosen to ignore this critical point. Instead, they lavish outlandish praise on an impostor. Tonight, <laughs> this is revelation. <laughs> Tonight, we will begin to deal with some of these nonsense and easily prove to our detractors. Backed up by forensic science, that's what we're doing. We all must, we all must, as a matter of fact, we all must make sure that what we are preaching is correct. Do you know the reason why you all have biometric passport? Do you know why you all have biometric passports? I'm asking you. Do you know why you all have biometric passports? It's because no two of you exist. If you're traveling abroad now, if you don't have a biometric passport with your fingerprint and whatever features that you may have on it, you will not get a visa. You will not get a visa because it is now becoming very difficult. Ask anybody that works for immigration passport division. Go back and try to answer another name to retrieve your old passport. Maybe not to retrieve, to have Try to, to, to have a double identity in Nigeria, as primitive as they are. Once you put in your fingerprint on the machine, the computer will return a message that you have been here before, that you're a fraud. That maybe your name is uh, Abubakar Biudu, and you've been there before. Ask anybody that works with immigration, unless they will completely wipe out your details. You know how corrupt they are. But if your details are still on the system, you cannot apply for a fresh passport if you've had one issued to you before. A biometric passport, I mean. It is biometric for a reason. That is one thing people don't understand. And that is what we are going to use this very evening to dismantle the zoo and all the lies surrounding Jubril. Simple biometric analysis. I hope it's making sense now, isn't it? The reason why you have a biometric passport is because they contain your biological features which are unique to you and you alone. Nobody can have it. I believe that some of you are enlightened. You will know that fingerprinting is the oldest form of identification. 
It is also so unique a technique for identifying who the real person is that cultures and civilizations long gone all over the world use it till this day. That is why when you go to vote, you use your thumbprint. Have you asked yourself why? Because if you lie about your voting intentions, I can go and find out if you voted for me or not. All I need to do is to subpoena the voting um, uh, the ballot boxes and I'll go through it. And I will scan all the fingerprints and I will tell you who you voted for. And it has happened in the zoo before. It has happened in Nigeria before. And we shall get to it. And now they'll be wondering, how did the intelligence services of IPOB get this? How did M Branch get this information? They'll be wondering. Because we are better than whatever you have in Nigeria at getting the very vital information that actually matter. If you remember, the, I'm talking now to educated and enlightened Yoruba men and women. They will understand what I'm talking about tonight. And for some of you listening all over the world, you will be able to learn something new about the political intrigues in Nigeria, and especially in Yoruba land. There is nothing happening in the East anywhere because <laughs> they are full of followers. They are just servants to the Fulanese. They don't do any, They don't do politicking. They have one Fulani godfather or the other. The use of fingerprint investigation and analysis was the root cause of the problem, the quarrel, the rift between the late Chief Obafemi Awolowo and the former military and civilian president of Nigeria, Chief Olusegun Obasanjo. Some of you don't know this, but I'll tell you tonight. And it goes to the heart of this jubril impostor matter to tell you that they can no longer hide. After this program tonight, if anybody raises his or her ugly head to tell you that Jubril is Buhari, then you know that person can never ever be redeemed again on this earth. Never, ever, ever. Remember, listen very carefully all of you all over the world, please. It's very, very important. We want to set the stage for the unmasking of Jubril with irrefutable scientific evidence. During the 1979 general election, some of you perhaps listening were not born then or you were too young, but I was already a young man. 1979 elections ushered in what is called the Second Republic in Nigeria. The, that very administration was headed by Shehu Shagari from Sokoto State, who is a Fulani man, a Muslim. And very urban. He's a very kind-hearted man. He's a very good man. Shagari is a, he's a good man. Obafemi Awolowo was contesting that election. So was Nam Diazikiwe. So was uh, uh, Malama Minukanu. And so also was Al Haji Waziri. I've forgotten his first name. Waziri. They all contested under MPN, UPN, NPP, GNPP, and PRP, as the case may be. I, I don't know how I remember all these things, but I still do. Obafemi Awolowo, a Yoruba man, discovered, he had a hunch, a premonition, that Obasanjo reached a deal with the Fulani people to hand over power to them. Understand? Obafemi Awolowo discovered that Obasanjo did not vote for him, despite his assurances to Awolowo that he did. Obasanjo, in fact, voted for the Fulani Shehu Shagari, because he owed his loyalty to the Fulani ruling class that ensured he became the military head of state after the assassination of Motala Mohammed in 1976. Follow this very, very carefully, please. It's very, very important because we're going to lay the foundation for what we're going to do this evening. We must all remember, have it at the back of our minds, that the first attempt by a Yoruba man to take over power after an attempted, should I say, unsuccessful coup or successful one, depending on how you look at it, ended in a total disgrace for the Yoruba race when Brigadier Ogundigbe was forced at gunpoint to run away to England by a Fulani recruit that was guarding him when Ironsi was assassinated. Brigadier Ogundigbe was the second in command to Agu Ironsi, General Agu Ironsi from my hometown, married to my aunt, that Victoria. When my auntie's husband was assassinated, General Ironsi, the next person in line was General Brigadier Ogundi, a Yoruba man, a Fulani recruit. 
Aboki with his gun, went into his office and asked him, Oga, what are you still doing here? Ogundipe fled and ran to London. Instead of taking over the command of the Nigerian army, Ogundipe fled. That, that gave rise to the emergence of Yakubu Gowon. So had Ogundipe assumed command, military command, after the death of Hironsi, you wouldn't have had the war in 1967. Is it becoming clearer now? Brigadier Ogundipe was humiliated and chased out of the military altogether. He ran and became some sort of an ambassador, or the high commissioner, whatever he's called. Having escaped this same fate, Obasanjo thought the same thing would happen to him. So when they came to his office, he thought that was going to be the end of it. But instead, they turned around and said, don't worry, you will now assume command of the army of Nigeria, and you become the head of state, military head of state. Obasanjo there and then swore an oath of loyalty to the Fulani Caliphate to return power to them in 1979. Understand this very clearly. Which he duly did. The icing on the two proof Obasanjo's loyalty to the Fulani, Obasanjo voted for Shagari and not his tribesman Awolowo. Because then all Yoruba land was UPN. Everybody was UPN. I mean everybody UPN. Awolowo being a very intelligent man, a man uh, very shrewd, very intelligent. When, when he got the information that Obasanjo made a secret deal to hand over power to the north, no matter what, Awolowo confronted Obasanjo, who denied it. Chief Awolowo then decided to hire forensic experts to investigate further. Obasanjo is still alive today. You can go and ask him now. Maybe, he, of course, he's listening. If what Namdekanu is saying on radio, be afraid the truth or not. Our was investigators used court subpoena to gain access when they were going to the tribunal, you know, to challenge the result, rigging and no rigging. You know, when you go to the court, that's what some of you don't know. When you go to the court to challenge your opponent, you can subpoena all the ballot boxes and they bring it and you can go through it one after the other. And that one, to get information, that was what Awo did. That was exactly what Awo did. When Awolowo had access, when Awolowo's investigators had access to the ballot papers, you know what they did? Surprise, surprise. They found out that Obasanjo voted for MPN, not UPN. Do you know how they knew it? By his fingerprint. Thus began the enmity between Obasanjo and the late chief Awolowo. Oh, Abbasanjo's thumbprint was in the column for MPN. I think it is a house and two and two stalks of corn, isn't it? By the side. That was the definitive proof that Obasanjo did not vote for Wolowo, as he claimed. He voted for the Fulani Shehu Shagari as he promised the North he would. Rather than damage his standing, that simple act of voting for a Fulani man ensured Obasanjo's victory in 1999. You may not believe it, but it is true. Because Obasanjo proved to all the world and to the Fulani at large that he is a loyal supporter of their cause. This gesture was reciprocated by handing over power to yet another Fulani man in Shehu Musa Yaradua. Is it not making sense? Obasanjo handed over to Shehu Musa. No matter what Atiku did, Obasanjo said no. Because uh, Yaradua Senior and Obasanjo, they've come a long way. They've come a long way. That was how it happened. Tonight, we'll continue to do what Awolowo did. Many Is there anything wrong with what Awolowo did before? We are going to look at the fingerprint of Buhari. And then compare it with the one of uh, Jubril. Very simple and neat. Very clean. And then you will tell us who is lying and who is telling the truth. But especially I want Yoruba newspaper editors and journalists to listen. And so also AFP. Whoever represents Ocean's French press in Nigeria must listen very carefully because I am doing the job that journalists should be doing. 
they are not going to pay IPOB intelligence any money for this or reward us for it. But they should kindly sit down and listen and take in what we are talking about. First of all, you must understand what a palm or fingerprint recognition is. Palm recognition is a technology that looks at some of the features of your arm. You know what it's called? You know, before you can pick up something, it's because your hand has friction. Do you know why your hand has friction? When you slide it on something, it sticks something. Because it has the grooves in it. The ridges you have in the palm of your hand. These friction ridges do not always flow continuously throughout a pattern and often result in very specific characteristics, such as the ending ridges or dividing ridges and dots. A palm recognition system is designed to interpret the flow of the overall ridges to assign a classification and then extract the smallest, the most minutiae of details. Now listen very carefully. A subset of the total amount of information available, yet enough information to effectively search for a large repository of palm prints. In other words, in other words, if you open up your hand and I take a picture of your hand, I will place it in a computer to scan and see if another person has that type of palm ever anywhere else in the whole world. That is what we have done. The one belonging to Buhari, nobody has it. The one belonging to Jubril belongs to Jubril. Very unique to Jubril. They are not the same people. Never ever the same. There is something called, you know, that the hand, the palm of your hand is very thin to fall. The palm of your hand. You can draw what is called an upper cross on it. If you draw a straight line down, at the top you draw another thin line at the top of it. That the those the part at the top of the line you've drawn is called the upper palm. The left side of it, of the divide you have drawn, is called the hypothena. The right hand is called the thana, and the lower side is called the lower palm. Science. Not fiction. Science. I'm not going to tell you the hardware we used to analyze this. I won't tell you. If you like, you can go and buy it. Luckily for, for us, for all of you, we have it. Luckily for all of you, we have a public picture of Buhari's finger and palm print officially issued by the APC. We also have the palm and fingerprint of Jubril in an official photograph issued by the government of Nigeria. So there is no doubt as to the authenticity of the pictures used or the pictures that we're going to analyze tonight. There have been previous attempts, or should I say some amateurish attempts to explain these features, but we are going to use a very simple technique that even a lay person can understand to prove to the world that Buhari is dead and replaced by an imposter, a body double, and a clone. There is a particular picture which I would like people to look at, prematurely circulated, I must say, but it must be circulated tonight. It has all the lines clearly spelled out. You know your hand. Do you see the, the when you open up your palm, the first line you see, do you know what it's called? It's called the heart line for your heart. The head is the second one. This is for the head. Because everybody has almost three. These three lines you have is very, is a permanent feature. One, two, and three. One at the top, the one and the two joining together and then coming down. Do you have it? Absolutely. The first one is called the heart hand, the second one is called the head hand, and the other one is called the lifeline. This last one here is called the lifeline. That's what it's called. It is unique in everybody. If you look at my own, you will see it is not the same as yours. It can never, ever be, never, ever be, never, ever be. 
If you look at it, at the palm, the palm of your hand, if you look at it, those three prominent lines, look at them again. That's where we're going to. And I want Tamake Uko and bear friends all over the world to circulate this very picture. Instruct them to circulate this very picture. Instruct them to circulate this very picture. That is the one I want circulated. So that the world can follow what we are saying. That is why some scientific expose should not be done on radio because people cannot see it. Maybe I should try giving this lecture on television. That would be far more better. But that is coming. Anyway. On the palm of your hand, you have the heart line, you have the head line, and you have the lifeline. And there is a picture of the imposter. The mistake he made was that he was waving at people and put his hand very close to his eyes, waving at people. That's why I said, after the program tonight, Jubril al Sudani cannot pretend he's Buhari and run for elections in Nigeria because he can no longer wave hands to people. It's as simple as that. It is here. What we are placing in the public domain tonight is irrefutable evidence. That the markings, the natural the birth markings on the hands, Akarakaya, Obadaraka, Jubril, is not the same. The palm of Jubril, the ridges, the contours, the dimensions are not the same with that of Buhari. Then you ask us, how did we get Buhari's own? I encourage you to look at the second picture. That was the picture taken in 2015 when Buhari went to vote. So there is no doubt. You can still see the ink on his thumb. It's there. And his palm wide open. Open, open. Open. MSN reported this briefly a few days ago. About this palm print. And why can't people sit down and understand that there is a uniqueness between each and every... No two people can be the same. No two persons can be the same. Not even twins. If you look at Buhari's, the real Buhari, if you look at his heart line, his headline, and his lifeline, you will see that there is chaos. It is not the same. It is not the same. Is this thing the same? Has anyone seen, is this thing the same? Never ever the same. This was painstaking research that we did. This is before we go to the next phase of this. Because uh, after tonight, by the grace of the Most High Elohim, the next time we appear, it will be far, it will be something far more serious than broadcasting on radio, I assure you. We are prepared for them. Can you see it very clearly? That the uh, fingerprint of Jubril and that of Buhari is not the same. The palm print of Jubril and Buhari is not the same. The lines at the palm of their hands are not the same. So if they are not the same, can they be the same person? Eh? Can they be the same person? No. If you claim you are me, and there is a record, as the police will always do, police will always take record of people's uh, fingerprints, so if there is any doubt, they check for fingerprint records. Very simple. So why can't hey, Nigerians? Why can't Nigerians look at the fingerprint of Jibril and that of Buhari? Is there? Now let me tell you what is going to happen. Buhari's ballot paper. He has been voting since. Is in Katsina. Buhari's ballot paper is in Katsina INEC office. Because you're required to store it for so many years. I am asking Yoruba, because they own the media. The Yoruba has owned the media in Nigeria. And they have done very well out of it. They make a lot of money out of it. They make a lot of money covering the truth and propagating lies. I want, you know, AFP is an international reputable company. They are from France. So they are white. They must be doing something right. I want you to go to the office of INEC in Casina for your own good, not for mine. 
and go and see the ballot paper used by Buhari. Bring it and look at the fingerprint of Jibril. You will know they're not the same people. Secondly, for us, if, if, if your eyesight is disturbing you, you go and get a pair of glasses as I've done. I wear glasses. Go and get one and look. You will see. Are those pictures being circulated at all as we speak? Very good. Even if you're blind as a bat, you'll be able to see that Jubril and Buhari are not the same people. Let me tell you, there's something unique about Palm Prince. No, not that one. Not that one. That is the problem that we are having. Not that one. Do you have this? The ones that you have is not... Absolutely. 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 Have it circulated immediately. So people can see it. And this is the one. Make sure that Amako Eko gets it. So it can be put on my page. Mazen Nam, the canon. That's where I, I tweet and I try to lecture people. And what it means to stand up for the truth. I want this very picture put everywhere. I want it sent to every media house in the world. It is irrefutable. Undisputable. Confirmation. 100%. That Buhari is dead. And an imposter is in his place. And let me tell you something from today. They will not be bringing out Jibril anymore to be waving hands at people. He will no longer wave. Even if he's going to wave, they will, he, anyway, there are telescopic cameras. He will just, he will clench his fist now. He will not open his palm anymore to wave. Because we've got, you see what, what I'm trying to do is to shut every exit. It's slow death. It's called death by a thousand cuts. I want them to squirm. I want these people to bleed and suffer. They will not bleed blood, but disgrace and shame. For every Nigerian, disgrace upon disgrace and shame. Now I've released this. White people will now become interested. As I told a friend of mine, by the time I'm done with the zoo, by the time Namdekanu is done with Nigeria, if you travel outside Nigeria and you tell somebody you're a Nigerian, they will spit on your face. Mark my words. I'm not in a hurry. The zoo will be emasculated, completely rendered useless. On this holy platform of Radio Biafra. The unique thing about palm print is that each one is unique to an individual. What we are trying to do is to show to the whole world that IPOB intelligence and M branch for that matter it will be on the trail of anybody that pretends to be in case Jubilee decides to run away. You know, the heat could be too much and he will decide to run. Do you know the funniest part is that they have registered this version of Buhari with INEC. He has completed his nomination papers and filed it back. They've accepted it without certificate, mind you, because it's fallen. It is too late to replace Jibril. So the cabal in the north must do everything possible to bring somebody who will run. If the fingerprint of Jibril we have, changes will inform you. If they bring another imposter, if they bring another body double, if they play any funny games, I'm telling you the truth. We'll publish it. For you to know. Because they can come to me and say, Oh, look, look at the ones I think I'm the kind of published. It's not the same as this. That's not what we're saying. We have what I call the control specimen, which is Buhari's finger and palm print from 2015 general election. No, nobody's disputing that. It is there for all to see. Anybody you bring will compare that person's fingerprint and palm print with the one that we have of Buhari in 2015 before he died in 2017. We must continue. Buhari will no longer, no, Jubril, I should say. Waving hand now has got him into trouble. He will no longer wave his hand. He is finished. Completely and totally finished. No matter how you look at it, <laughs> Buhari is truly uh, gone. And you know what they may do? You know, they may go to, to impressionists and try to get a cast of Buhari's hand 
and imprint it on a glove, on a lecker's glove, and he'll be wearing it. So when he waves at you, you'll try to see the same lines, isn't it? But the only way you know is when you shake his hand, you will see that uh, Jibril is indeed lifeless. Because you won't feel anything. It will only, only be rubber. After considering all the photographs which are being issued right now, the second one of which, EK to the one you showed to me, must also be issued. What other proof? What other proof do you need? I'm going to bring more. As I said, is that there is dead by a thousand cuts. It's like it's like when you catch a criminal, you sentence them to five hundred years imprisonment as they do in America. So you'll be seeing your death. You'll be pleading to die. But you will never get that opportunity. Because you know you are seeing your death coming. That's what I'm going to do to Nigeria. I want Nigeria to see its demise coming. And they cannot do nothing about it. Absolutely nothing. They're helpless. That's what we're doing. So be patient with us. Let us look at the video. Do you have the video? The video of, of Jubril <laughs> going through an album. Jibril and I got through an album. Unbelievable. Let us look at the video purportedly showing a certain Buhari from Sudan, Jibril Aminu al Sudani, going through his own photo album in front of um, the hapless, non combatant Buratai, a mother of innocent people. Somebody said to me today that, um, uh, that Buratai will take over. I said, if, if Brata takes over, <laughs> yeah, that means, uh, that means uh, Nigeria will break up within two weeks. He's not a soldier. He's not a fighter. He doesn't know. He's just a, a murderer, a local terrorist in uniform. He doesn't know anything. His brain is empty. Here is an example, another example, for those who claim they are blind. This is another example of a young man trying very hard to appear and sound like Buhari. What is painful is that those behind this scam, this fraud, think that uh, they are Nigerians are fools. Of course, some of them are. I want this video to be placed in the public domain. It is already in the public domain, but with not a great deal of understanding. We shall try to explain it. We shall try to... Are you going to play it for me? Can you play it? When you're ready, let me know. I want all of you to listen to the voice of this man. They can no longer deny it. They cannot deny it. Is it playing it because I cannot hear it? Go ahead and play the voice. And here is Retired General Buzau. Here, I think I was receiving my certificate from War College, United States of America. But I think, yeah, I was a little bit earlier before I was retired. I'm sure all of you have that. And I'll try and play it again. He kept saying, I think, I think. He was trying to remember what he was told by his handlers to say. He kept saying, I think. And do you know what got me? He said, I think this, this was when I was receiving my certificate. You know, certificate is very important because it has none. This was when I was receiving my certificate from, listen carefully, War College, United Kingdom, America. <laughs> if there is any War College, me, I want, I want to go to such War College. Yo. War College in United Kingdom, America. I want, because if you go to such War College, combining the prowess of British military and the technological might of U.S. Army, you'll be the baddest general in the world. Please. Uh, and the other one, he said, I don't know what I was doing here. I think this was when I was a general and a major and I retired. Does that make any sense to anybody? And when he could no longer remember <laughs> the pictures, as he was told, he said, it's good to go to a museum. Is museum where you keep your pictures? <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know what to keep in a museum. Hey! Unbelievable.
Nigeria is a shame. Please, I want to amuse myself. Play it again for the world to hear. The voice of Jubril of Sudani. Play it, please. Hey, boy. I hope all of you can hear it. I think here, uh, I was a major general before I retired. Does that make sense to anybody? But it's Nigeria. Nothing ever makes sense. But we must proceed because this very gospel must be preached. The world must know that what we are doing here is that we are trying to save Africa from itself. We